Anji, welcome. A um, few days back, I posted a video about how I got 8.5 in IELTS reading. I noticed a pattern. A lot of you guys have been through all the Cambridge books, scoring about 23, 24, or even less than that, and now you're wondering what to do next. So, this video, it's going to be again about how I scored 8.5, but what I had to do and how I went about it so you know exactly what to do as well. So if you're stuck there, let's get started. So first thing first, you need to have a strategy to mow this down. Because if you just go, you know, haphazardly, it's not going to work out. First thing that you need to do is set an aim for, you know, the grade that you want. So for me, I want an 8.5. That's what I was working against. For you, it could be 7, could be 6.5, could be 6. Whatever your grade is, you need to set an aim for it. Okay, now once you've done that, second thing, do not go through all the Cambridge books at like, you know, at once. Because here's what happens, you need practice material that you can assess yourself against. And if you've finished all the IELTS Cambridge books, well, if you haven't improved and you're still stuck on like 21, 22 points out of 40, you're in a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> because, you know, how do you assess yourself that, you know, you've gotten better over time? you won't be able to because you've already been through these questions and you know the answers by now and if we do it again, it won't be a true assessment. So, don't go through all the Cambridge books at once. Just keep that in mind. Now let's kind of like move forward from there. So, after that, what you want to do or what you want to start with is familiarizing yourself with the exam format, okay? So that you can do either by looking at the Cambridge book, okay, pick one, Start from there and just, just go through like, you know, what an exam looks like. Or you can go to the IELTS website, just go to the IELTS IDP website. They have all these different questions for reading for you to familiarize yourself with, okay? Do that, know exactly what different kind of questions are there. Once you've done that, once you know, you know exactly what the IELTS exam is all about and you've practiced some questions and you know, these this practice that you've done, do it with non-Cambridge material, okay? So use that material to kind of like, you know, learn a little bit about IELTS. And once you familiarize yourself, then pick up the Cambridge book and do your first mock exam from the Cambridge book. This will be your baseline. This will be where your English is currently, you know, before you start your preparation. You need to know that, and that is important. Because if you don't know where you are, it's hard to get to where you want to be. Know your point A, and that was something that I did. First thing that I did was, you know, familiarize myself with the exam, and then picked up the Cambridge book, went through it, did one exam, realized I was about like seven and a half, seven, my reading was there. So do that for yourself. That's what you want to start with. Now that you have a baseline, you need to understand how IELTS is marked as well, okay? So say, if you want to get to seven, how many points do you need for that? That is important. Now let's quickly look at that as well. So when we look here, um, if you have, you know, if your answers are ranging between 22 to 19, you are at 5.5 band score. And I don't know if you want to be there, but I wouldn't, I would like to improve, right? So if you're at 26 to 23, you are about like band level six. And if you're above that 29 to 27, it's six and a half. 32 to 30 is seven, and then it kind of like goes upward and you get the point, right? You need to understand exactly how many points you're getting and what does that translate into. So you've done the base prep, right? You know exactly what you have to do. You've set what the overall grade, you know, your baseline, you know that, and you've established where you want to be, okay? So that's good. Now, when you start practicing, you need to track your progress. This is the most important part of preparation. You know, you could be preparing for years and years, and you if you don't track exactly how well you're doing, it's pointless. Like, it's literally pointless. How do you assess yourself that you've improved? So do that, okay? So all the different question types, every time that you do a, like, you know, a practice paper, see exactly where you're messing up. Um, for me, it was true, false, not given. It was a little bit tricky for me to like, you know, understand that and compare and compare the information. So like find out exactly what your weaknesses are. You need to know this. 
and this is where you want to start. So, you know, you know exactly what your weaknesses are and then you can start preparing um, for those. Now, next thing that I want to tell you is the eight important skills that you need basically to score eight, eight and a half or even nine in IELTS reading. Okay, so let's let's get started with that. The first thing that you have to do is basically have to demonstrate your reading comprehension so that you know you can indicate like whether the information is correct or incorrect. So according to the passage, that's what it is. That's the most important bit, right? So you need to be able to understand how you can, you know, what is being said in the passage that is important. Number two, you have to be able to identify like what the main idea is in the passage from reading just a bit, okay? That's something they will test you against as well. This is ability number two. If you're messing up in your um, picking the headings, you know, like um, or multiple choice questions, this is where you need to brush up. Number three, you need to be able to compare information and tell if it's true, false, or not given, right? So that's what they're testing you there. Number four, you need to be able to identify viewpoints, biases, and you know what the facts might be. So you need to be able to understand what the author is saying and what their perspective is. And when they ask you the question, you should be able to compare, you know, like if it's true, false, or yes, no, not given, right? That's where you do that. Next thing, it's about identifying information and locating it precisely. For example, your Phillips, you need to know exactly how to manage those. Okay, so once you've done that, you also need to have intensive reading skills and be able to like finish it fast because you only have so much time in like IELTS reading exam, right? You have 60 minutes and you have 40 questions. So that is something you need to keep, you know, in mind. And of course, understanding the whole concept of like what the passage or the paragraph is. So you need to know that. And finally, you need to be able to distinguish between what the main idea is and what the details are. These are the eight skills that you need to exactly brush on, develop, whatever you want to call it, you need to have these. If you're struggling and if you're stuck at 21, 22, identify which question type you're stuck with and you know exactly what to improve. So I've given you what the skills are and I've given you exactly the information that you need to basically, you know, improve yourself. So now you might be wondering, how do I improve my comprehension skill? Well. For me, what I did was I read these five books and I'm gonna like tell you those as well. So develop your reading. And you know, the first book that you know I have on the list here is like Harry Potter by JK Rowling. It's a fantastic book. Read it, understand it, and you know, try to summarize the, uh, whatever you read, whatever you learn in the story to your friend, to your family. Try to like explain it to them like what's happening. That's a good way to learn. Second is like read the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. That's another book that I would recommend. Third, 1984 by George Orwell, fantastic as well. These are good books to develop your vocabulary, your comprehension. The fourth book that I read was The Great Gatsby by um, Scott Fitzgerald, fantastic, phenomenal book. And finally, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Now this is going a little bit further back, dating it, but hey, you know what? It's a great book nonetheless. Read these five books, learn the vocabulary in there, understand how it's written because by just doing that alone you'll develop your understanding your comprehension to such a better level that you know believe me you'll come out a winner out of this okay so that's the first thing you gotta do if you want to compre increase your comprehension now next thing for building your vocabulary just by reading alone it's not going to happen you need to start basically a notebook okay in the notebook break it down into four columns. The first one should be the word. Okay, write down the word that you found that, you know, you found interesting or new or difficult. And the second column, write down what the meaning of it is. So quickly go to Google, type the word, find out what the meaning of the word is, put that down there. In the third one, third column, write down the synonyms of the word. What potential similar words could there be? And the fourth column, it should be basically a sentence where you make one. Do this exercise and I promise you, your vocabulary will expand like 10 times, if not more. Because this is really good practice. That's how I did it. Do it, that's important. So there you go. That's kind of like, you know, how I would go about figuring out what to do if you're stuck at, you know, 21, 22 points after even finishing all the Cambridge books and you don't know exactly what to do next. So this is what you gotta do. Figure out your weaknesses, figure out your mistakes, figure out what skills you need to develop, and you know, 
put in the work and I promise you, your brand score will improve. So I hope you found this useful. I hope this is of use to you. Um, share this information with your friends. If someone you know is stuck multiple times, they've given IELTS and not getting the score, share this information. They'll find it useful. And of course, subscribe. We'll be throwing out more information like this. And for all the books that I mentioned, I've linked, uh, provided the links down in the description as well. So have a look and you know, you can actually get the books from there. And uh, yeah, don't forget to, you know, See us in the next video. All right, take care. Good luck with your exam.